So here's a question for you. And it's connected with what we talked about in the last class. We were talking about redox tables, the one in the data booklet. This is sort of an exercise in understanding how redox tables work. You don't actually make redox tables this way, but I'm giving you a bunch of reactions involving, well, some very valuable metals, palladium, gold, platinum, and silver. And we've been putting together various combinations of their ions, which are oxidizing agents, and another metal, which are reducing agents. And some of the reactions happen on their own. They're spontaneous, and some, or one of them at least, is not spontaneous. It doesn't happen on its own. And we're supposed to use this to build a redox table. Well, let's see. Unfortunately, it takes up a lot of space, and it's very hard to type this. So if you want to get this stuff down, because I have to go to a blank page now. Okay, you can pause this if you want to write it down, but here we go. Okay, so it's relatively straightforward to do this once you get rolling on it. So we're going to put the oxidizing agents here. We're going to put the producing agents here. We're going to have the strongest oxidizing agents at the top and the weakest at the bottom. And the producing agents are the reverse. So this will be the weakest reducing agent. And this will be the strongest reducing agent. The basic idea is if a reaction is spontaneous, the OA is above the RA. If the reaction is not spontaneous, the OA is below the RA. Now I hope that I've given you information so there's no ambiguity. Sometimes there is, by the way, which means you need to do at least one more test. But let's start with the very first reaction. So the oxidizing agent in that case was palladium four, oh sorry, two plus aqueous ions. Now, the trick to these questions is give yourself lots of room. You might be putting things above, below, or in between things. And if I wanted to, and I do want to, I could write out the half reaction for it. It forms palladium solid. Okay. Now, that going back to the question, let's see, I reacted it with gold, AU, and AU is a metal, and it's a reducing agent. And there was a spontaneous reaction. Have you notice that? There was a spontaneous reaction. So spontaneous reactions mean the reducing agent is below the oxidizing agent. So gold, the metal, is down here. Well, so is everything else. I can now write out the rest of gold's half reaction. All right, now, so I might just squeeze something in the middle or above or who knows where, but let's go to the next one. Okay, in the next reaction, I took platinum ions, PT4+, and I reacted with gold metal, right? So gold metal was my reducing agent. Platinum ions were my oxid, and nothing happened. No spontaneous reaction. So that merely tells me that platinum 4 plus aqueous ions happen to be below gold. And, by the way, also below palladium. So you'll notice you often locate a couple things with one reaction. Okay, now again, keeping us nice and well spaced, I go to my last reaction. I took platinum 4 plus aqueous ions. I reacted with silver metal. Again, silver metal is a reducing agent. Platinum 4 plus is an oxidizing agent. And there was a spontaneous reaction. That tells me that silver is below. Well, then silver is also below everything. And. Congratulations, you have just built, okay, you didn't do anything, I did it. I have just built a redox table based on these four metals. Now, you could actually look up two of them on the table in your data booklet. This guy and this guy, and they're consistent. You'll have to take my word for it. The other ones are actually in the right locations too. 
So if our table had platinum and palladium in it, palladium would be somewhere above gold and platinum would be between gold and silver. Okay, you need to practice this. And if you go to the Moodle site, you'll find a bunch of worksheets and I put them all together. I don't know why I did that, but the very first worksheet is worksheet 86 and it's building redox tables. There are three questions like this of various levels of difficulty. They're actually not all that hard. And so there's questions one, two, and three. I don't know. You don't have to necessarily do them all. And then there are two more. And the last two ask you slightly harder questions about redox tables, right? So you might want to try a couple of these. Um, you don't have to check with me. There is a separate file with the answers. And you're in luck. It's the only one that's there right now. Later on, it can get kind of confusing. Every once in a while, somebody starts with the answer sheet and tries to figure out what I'm asking them to do. No, get the worksheet. It's one of four and try those questions as many or as few as you want to. And it really gives you a solid understanding how a redox table works.